well, I guess I should just start off. I know Darren from a long ass time ago, right? I don't know how long ago. Don't date us, dude. We're fucking old. <laughs> like two months ago, okay? So, uh, uh-huh. yeah, but back in the day, Darren was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to start working with Nike and they're uh, launching a skateboard brand. And I was like, Snake, uh, skateboard sneakers. And I was like, oh, what's it called? And he's like, Nike skateboard. And I was like, oh, I could come up with a better name than that. But then, uh, <laughs> so I was like, oh, wicked. And then, uh, yeah, rest is kind of history, right? We were uh, touching base and, you know, throughout the years. And you guys really blew up, like, as far as, like, uh, Nike SB. Um, yeah, no doubt. Did you- I think I think the um, first time I met you, Cliff, I was, I was working at Zoo York. And that was, like, in the late 90s. Yeah. In, in, okay. in the city. And that's kind of where my journey started with uh, Nike for the next – you know, up until a couple of years ago <clears throat> for 18 years. Uh, wow. But that's where I met Sandy Bodecker, who was starting Nike SB and was basically doing his research to connect with people uh, in the key city, specifically LA and New York. Right. And um, that's where I met him. I mean, shit, dude, that was like, that was like 2000, late 2000s, maybe early 2001. Uh-huh. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow, Zoo yeah. York. That's that's uh, yeah. that's a long time Throw, ago. Throwback names there. The, yeah, hey, hey, the ago. old zoo. The old zoo. The, 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 old zoo. the, the yeah, real yeah. zoo. Not the, the zoo. not the right. not the reboot, right? Mm-hmm. That's dope. So how do so how did that all um how did you get all started in that like what what happened? They were just like oh so here's an office and just start coming up with some ideas. Oh, I wish. Um, <laughs> nah, it was old Nike, man. Just like the old Zoo York, but not old Nike. So. Uh, basically I was helping, uh, the homies out at zoo in sales. So I knew a lot of the shops just from, you know, hustling boards and everything else, Mm -hmm. um, especially on the East coast. And, um, you know, Nike, I, I went to Nike first, um, in sales. That was in 2002, uh, based on New York. So I was worked out of the New York office as a part of the greater Nike sales organization, mm-hmm. but uh, kind of this new little category was starting within Nike, which I think is at some point became commonplace. I don't know if it's that way anymore, um, but this little category. So I worked in the office, but I kind of reported to everyone in Beaverton. Mm-hmm. So um, I had freedom, but I was young, man. I mean, I think I was like 25, 26 right. um, when that went down. So you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was going to go work for Nike for six months. Mm-hmm. I picked my head up, and 18 <laughs> years later, I was like, "What the fuck?" Right. <laughs> that's that's pretty ill. Cutting those checks. Yeah. <laughs> Nike, <laughs> I don't know if it was so much for. checks, man, back then. Freedom. It sounds like checks now, but back then it was like, "Oh shit, what am I doing? Did I sell my soul to the devil?" Right. SB was in a closet back then. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, dude. Like, yo, work d- out of I like, used to. I used to go around with a backpack. Like, Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm over talking, but I, I used oh, to ha- literally carry a backpack around that had four shoes in it. And I would travel up and down the East coast, you know, going to my friends to try and hustle, you know, for them to buy 12 pairs or set up an account. Right. Think about that shit. Yeah. Now he, people would probably give their first born, but back then it was like, had to have a account. serious conversation to get them to to sell SB. Right. It's crazy. Now there's requirements to carry SB. I remember. Oh, too. That time. Yeah. Too many stories. Yeah. Yeah. You can eat. You can eat, bro. Yeah. It's you know, part of the pot. It's part of the whole thing. You're yeah. gonna watch Roscoe eat a chicken watch sandwich. A yes. Mukbang, bro. <laughs> 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 Sounds dope. What are uh, What are some? I mean, you know, I was kind of obviously before we were talking. I was looking at like some old like uh SB picks and stuff like that some of the first ones that were made what are some mm-hmm. of your like uh favorite ones that you did you guys did a lot of collaborations yeah i mean <clears throat> i didn't do anything mm. um, <laughs> but as a team we did a lot but um i do so you asked me to pull out a couple so i'm gonna um share and they're beat up didn't even try and like lace them or anything but I've been literally have held on to these oh. since they came out. So these were like the Reese Forb wheats um, those? that I still run to this day. 
Wow. So I'm sure there's a bunch of sneaker nerds out there that are going to be like, come on, man, really? But yes, <laughs> like I, I put flat laces in them from the jump just because that's what I wanted. Right. I've skated in them, but they're pig suede, so they held up pretty good. Plus, I don't really skate that well. I'm getting old. <laughs> Right. But Cliff, you already called me out on that. <laughs> I didn't um, call you out on it. It's a risk now, man. It's a risk to skate. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. yeah. Definitely when you fall down, it takes a lot longer to heal. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for the subscribe, Ali. That's a big, uh, big look. Thanks, Machete. Thanks for the follow. Nice. I think the, the... Cliff, you guide me here, man. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, no, um, it's all good, man. Keep going, bro. But, like, that was kind of like first series, mm -hmm. right? Um not when I got on hand. One of my favorite second series, which these, I have a pair I wore, but you're fortunate that I had these in my office. Um, dun, dun, Futura dun, dun, Dunks. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, word. We have so these were amazing. That, I think they called them nightshades. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because back then, they, they called them just by, they didn't know the, the, Back then, they just called them the um, color, the colorway that was on the label. Right, right. Thanks for um, the follow, Heavy Mind. And then I think one of the most pivotal moments that I was fortunate to be a part of, and big shout out to Jeff Staple. Oh, the pigeons, Pigeon. yeah. And. Whoa, you can send those over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, hey. where's the pigeon, the though? Sneaky oh, the, like the real pigeon. <laughs> I'll send you a vision from New York. But but the, the, the amazing thing about this is, you know, Jeff, respect to Jeff Staple because, um, you know, he's had a, a really solid knowledge around the game, specifically coming from Japan um, and the experiences he's had in Japan and paying attention to what was going on in Japan, that he was hip to this shit before, you know, this shoe happened. But when this shoe happened, I mean, changed everything. It was a it was a pivotal moment, man. I mean, for us, because you know we didn't know. I mean, right. we knew, but we didn't really know. But right. yeah, that was a that was a good one. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Did those, uh, Another the, one. The those Futura uh, sneakers. Did they come with the the pink box? Was that the particular nah, one? Or that, that was the Dunkle. That was silver. Silver. The silver pink box. Pink was right? the next color box. The Dunkle. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember him saying yeah, like he dunkle. was like yeah, it was my idea to do the pink box. I don't know if that's any that validity was the to that. Probably. The Dunkle, right. yeah. Yeah. No, well, I don't know. Respect to to Futura because I'm not sure how that. I do know that when that shoe came out, we made the pink box to catch up to that shoe, and mm -hmm. then it just we needed it back then, dude. We were just we were going. We didn't. There wasn't some strategy in place of like we're gonna do a colored box like every two years. Right. It just kind of happened that way. Right. The way boxes work at Nike, you have to do that shit like two years in advance. Whoa. So we hustled on the pink to get it done for that shoe. And then it ended up sticking. Nice. Oh, wow. so, so it is. Yeah, no, and before SB, those dunks were coming in orange and brown boxes and they were just called, yeah, Pro, man. they were just called pro B. It wasn't even wow. uh, <laughs> just dunk pro B's. Cause yeah, if I remember correctly, the first Geno's came in a regular box. Yeah. The Reese's even, as well. Yeah, they weren't SB boxes yet. They were just no. There's a Nike box, <laughs> but even even yo even these when they first came, mm -hmm. it was a Nike box. It wasn't an SB box. Mm. You know, yeah. like they're yeah, it was um, no this SB. One, yet. No, this one I thought those. I thought it had SB on it. I think the no. black and purple. Oh, we got the first. We got SB. Neff in the building. Okay, Let's good. Get, uh, See, you know better than follow. me, dude, and I was I living in it. I think. Um, but you know how uh, a crazy one was, you know, in the very beginning, to, to this point, it's like, yeah, we called it Nike skateboarding because that's what we were doing, right? <laughs> right. It was a sport within Nike, and we were, we were claiming it as a sport. It gave us purpose to, like, make better product and what have you. But one of the um, things was on the label, right, we had to call out, on the label, you had to call out SB. So, and mm. especially when they were in the, the brown boxes, the typical Nike boxes, it was just an easier way to uh, call the name so you could track the product through the process. And then when they pulled them and picked and packed boxes, they kind of knew 
which ones to pull in. So the label came before people started calling them SBs, but then the kids were calling shops saying, hey, do you got those SBs? Do you got those SBs? Oh, and crazy. eventually we ended up, I remember the day, sitting in Sandy Bodecker's office and was like, do we need to call it Nike SB? Because right. our logo before that was Nike Air. Oh, really? And and back then, it was a, it was a push and pull, but uh, we eventually, it took us a little bit of time, but we ended up landing with legal, the ability to call it Nike SB. But that came from the kids. Wow. That's ill. Good looking out, kids. For their super mm-hmm. copyright infringement. Right. Like, you know, oh, dude. Don't whole... even get me started. So they, any little change to something, you got to go through like a whole skyscraper oh, is that, is that Roscoe? full of people. Yeah, yeah, it's Roscoe. Oh, so dude, you know. Back then, oh. we were bending and breaking rules. Yeah. Well, like you, you... skateboarders did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That's ill. Um, another clip. You tell me when you want to stop. I got like a couple more. Keep going, so this bro. one, sorry, sorry for all the 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 kind of my. I have a daughter who <laughs> my shoes were in her uh, little playroom. That's cool. So thankfully, she never touched these. Those are super limited. That box. Oh, but this, Tiffany. yeah, this is super limited. Personalized by Ruby O'Brien. Um, but uh, this was another pivotal moment, man. Right. Shout and respect to Nick Diamond and everything he did because had to get in there. Yeah. That that was a that was another pivotal moment of like, oh shit. Push in the mic this like, way. Man. We got something. You gotta sit this way, static. You gotta sit closer to Roscoe. Oh, you We're trying to plug in static right now, static selector, because he's really good friends with Nikki Diamonds. Oh, sick. And uh, I think he's friends. I think he's homies with the crew here, the Concepts Crew in Boston. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for years and years and years. Yeah, we all. There you go. Like, That's crazy. A little bit. What up, man? What's going? How you How you doing, man? You good? I'm chilling, dude. Yeah, he's in Boston right now. He's working with the. Dope, dope. Yeah, What's Dion and uh, you know, Dion and the gang. I, I I did record release parties there. I was going there when I was like, a kid, 17, 18 years old. I used to drop flyers off there doing street team and all that. So I watched oh, their whole dude. transformation. That's dope, dude. Well, yeah. listen, you might hear him in the background yelling because the Celtics are playing. So <laughs> yeah. Celtics are the amazing. I'll go. I'll go tell him to keep it down. <laughs> That's yeah. what's up. Um, all right. So, uh, two more, maybe three, but two more. Uh, so next one was this one, Cliff. And this is the what now is I think they do what the what the on everything. Uh-huh. Roscoe, you can tell me. Um, but this one was yeah. amazing because James, shout to James Arizumi. Because James Arizumi was the designer that came over uh, and joined the team probably in like 2004 or five, but he came up with this idea on a, on a trip, made the shoe. And I remember when he like, cause back, you know, we would uh, review the shoes and be like, okay, that one, that one, that one, you know, whatever picked the shoes that we wanted to bring to market. And when he put these out, you know, we were, we were, we were hyper critical on ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, not only as, um, skateboarders but then also with respect to uh nike and sneakers so when these came we were like what the fuck are those i'm like dude those things are ugly like (laughs) get them out of here right and and i was in the position then where Mm -hmm. you know i was influential and uh they were just like okay they they kind of put them away and then we had this seminal moment when this came out which was the you know the skating in here is amazing uh all the acting and the other shit is you know, I remember whatever. that. <laughs> but, wow, dude. Um, when we did this, we did like a huge tour. I mean, dude, we made fucking books. Um, but we needed a shoe. Because how could Nike launch a fucking movie and all this other stuff without a shoe? Right. So last minute, we were like, yo, get those. I was like, James, get those ugly ass shoes out of the closet. <laughs> like, let's make those. So that's. There that story's go. probably been told, but that's how this has happened. That's it. That's amazing, bro. That's awesome. Man. That's 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 great. James James can fact check me. 
<laughs> wait, wait. What, what size are you though? Are those like nine samples, or are they like just oh, dude, size ten? Dude, I work for I work for Nike for almost twenty years, dude. My feet have been bound to be a size nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the magic number, everyone who's listening. Because right. samples come in size nine. So uh, if you're a nine, size ten, you're golden. But I, hey, I clipped my toenails to get in the nines, but I'm really a nine five. <laughs> Cut a couple of toes off. It's all good. <laughs> That's pretty ill. Yeah. Um, because I know this is like hip-hop shit and i didn't have them so cliff this was like last minute so i apologize but oh, it's all good, these man. i run i we- run these all the time nice yeah. mf dooms, oh, dooms. dooms. yeah gave those to my kid because they were a nine and i don't fit in those <laughs> ah. does he, he still have them he doesn't treat them with respect he wears them all the fucking time and shit <laughs> I want to punch him in his neck. That's what sneakers are for, though, to wear, yeah. huh? You got to wear them. That's so, pretty ill. So, uh, last one. A lot of them I've worn, dude. I mean, I got some in boxes. I'm not going to front. But, this, this dude you know, wears a lot all of his kicks. I he wear gets, like, everything. He's got his care. pair of Kaws. He like, just wears them at the bar. He's like, I got, spilling I got whiskey uh, on four them. pairs of Tiffany Lowe's yeah. that are just, you know, big up Perry and the crew. Right. right. Hook me image. up all the time. And, uh, yeah. I never got those What the Dunks, though. I just never had the appeal for no? it. No? But now I skipped on it, man, because I picked and choose. Like, I'll take those. But I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I did one of those, and I fucked up bad. <laughs> right. Fucked up. It's crazy, man, because you know we had we had a a, a very um, I don't want to say strict, but a, a a very common understanding that when we did a shoe, we would never do it again. Right. It was like boom, like and and it became this idea like creative think tank of like, you know, from cultural references to what was happening in our lives, like let's just story, story, stories. And I, I, I think there were there were a few eras of S B, especially in the beginning, that were amazing mm-hmm. and probably had people like, what the fuck? What were those guys think doing mm-hmm. or thinking? But a majority of those stories just came from what was happening in our lives um at the time. And um you know there were some errors that weren't so good. But I think another one that kind of like and hopefully this is a segue, Cliff, is <laughs> when this shoe came out. Which you can see is all busted and beat because I wore them. Oh, yeah. Lobsters all day. Yeah. I loved it. That was such a interesting, the boxing, the wood box. Was it the wood box? I was uh, friends and family was wood, I think. I used to yeah, work so for the- Stash. So, he, you know, I, I used to uh, always get fucking crazy shit. So oh, that's awesome. Stash of Ventura would just throw shit at me like, I'm not wearing that, but you take that, bro. It's good for you. <laughs> Too red. Thanks. Not wearing those. But uh, <laughs> awesome. yeah, I remember that was that was a real incredible, like just the whole boxing of it. Like it just came like like a lobster, right? Like like yeah. like In a, a crate. came with the rubber bands on yeah. the toes. Like, oh, shit, really? They were claws that was and... fucking dope, man. I, w- I thought that was like amazing. Think picnic tables like on oh, the, the black, uh, the red and like, white. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys the, did a good uh, job I... on that, man. Uh, we did, but credit to the concepts crew because there's a lot of people to mention that were a part of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob Hepler, Frank the Butcher, and of course Dion Point. But when they first pitched this idea, um, you know, we we also had another thing. Like if if people had a connection back to us, which we were very personal mm-hmm. with the accounts that we had, and very we were, you know, I was traveling for shit, man, 15 years pretty much, just nonstop. Um, so. If they had ideas, we were we were open to the ideas, which is why you guys have probably seen over the years like a lot of like shop shoes. Mm-hmm. But it was more about the ideas, not about a shop and a shoe. And um, these guys were like eager, and they first came. Uh, Dion and Frank came to uh, Portland to share the idea. I was like, "Yo, guys, guys, I got, I, I understand, I get it. Go, you gotta do more thinking because it it wasn't what this is now." Right. And um, I basically said no. And they came back and, you know, they completely knocked it out of the park with the details and the rubber band and the packaging oh, and everything. Yeah. And I was like, yo, how can you not do this shoe from a crew that's from Boston that I'm sure there's a lot of people all over the country or world that give a fuck about lobsters? Yeah. But lobsters <laughs> are synonymous. That's the only time I wear like, How can we not Boston? do it? Right. <laughs> and now do they have five colors, right? Yeah, it's like the yeah, yellow, yeah. red, green, purple, blue. I have blue, yeah, red, man. and green. Yeah. And no, blue, red, and purple. The last one. The purple, yeah, pretty... the purple was crazy. Oh. And then the yellow one. There was a yellow one? Am I bugging? 
Uh, nah, yeah. there was a yellow one. Yeah, yeah, that was a yellow one. That's the super friends and family joint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we just did it. So when they did the blue one, I'll give you this. This story's been told, and it's going to be told a lot more uh, uh, through some stuff we just did with Nike. But um, they, when the blue one launched, I Steve Pelletier, shout to Steve Pelletier. Um, yeah, he's Pel- from New England, and at the time, I think he's now the uh, senior PLM or, or something, footwear no, director or some PLM. shit at Nike. Um, but he, oh, shit. he, he was the, uh, developer back then, uh, on the team and he's from new England. And when the blue ones came out, it was a couple months before he was like, yo, there's a yellow one. And I was like, what? I was like, yo, can you, can you just make a yellow one as a gift? Because, you know, the red lobster was shared with all the SB retailers and Mm -hmm. we were very intent on making sure that. You know, we were keeping people alive, like a float, um, you know, with the money that we're making and what have you. So we were like, hey, man, respect to you guys. Hey, as a gift. And this is, again, uh, Roscoe. Uh, I don't know if this shit even still happens these days, but because of the relationship I had with Sandy and uh, Dan Burris and their relationship with the factory, we were able to do a small size run of 36 pairs Whoa. that um, literally showed up, no bullshit, showed up two days before I was supposed to fly to Boston. And it was like three cases of shoes or some shit. And I was like, dude, I can't travel with all these. So I ended up FedExing them to the hotel. And then when I got there, went down in the basement of concepts when they were on Brattle street and had the whole crew there. And it was amazing. Bunch of, bunch of Boston dudes downstairs in the basement, drinking beers. And <laughs> it was the night before the launch. And I was like, Hey guys, want to thank you on behalf of, you know, Nike, myself, but for you guys, thank you for the work you've done around the lobster. And they did such a great job with the launches and what have you. I think kids for the blue lobster were waiting out line for like six days yeah. or something crazy. The wow. line was dumb long. Makes sense. So we give them the, the lobsters and literally I think the fucking building is still shaking because <laughs> everyone just went bananas. They saw the yellow joints. Yeah, so I'll, oh, I'll go on record to tell you, matter of fact, there were 36 made. 27 of them were gifted to Concepts. Oh, shit. The others were gifted to Nike people. Oh, wow. Of course, Nike needs their cut. That's crazy. Escobar needs his cut. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. I mean, it sounds... Yeah, yeah. It sounds legit. I mean, that whole sneaker craze. I feel like Nike SB had a lot to do with that sneaker craze, that, like, let's wait a week for that fucking pair. Well, it was whatever. the era of what it was also like yeah. that, that mid 2000s where basketball wasn't a thing for Nike. Mm-hmm. Like it was, but it wasn't yeah. like yeah, yeah, Jordan true. was done. Kobe was cool, yeah. but his sneakers weren't Jordan's. Right. So like Nike yeah. basketball went through this drought and that was what was really pushing their stuff. Perfect and timing. SB kind of came in with like Fuego. Yeah, it was mm. dunk after dunk after dunk after Joe, dunk after but dunk. It was small, like, man. Yeah, no, it wasn't like, like overdone. It was just very to the point, like, oh, right. chocolate, Zoo York, this, that. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pee Wee Herman, this one, Holt. Darren, I'm, I'm, like, I'm from Brooklyn, bro. And for me, like, strictly 90% of my sneakers are SBs. Mm. And it's always been like that. And, you know, and normally it's Air Force One or Jordan. Well, that was the era. It was either SB or Total Lifestyle. Air Force One. Right. Yo, but you can't front. You can't front that SB Dunks. Like, one, it's a classic shoe. Dunk is a classic shoe. Like, there's no denying that. And then, two, they were more comfortable. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can kick the shit out of someone, bro, and not feel it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the tongues back then were, like, super fat. I yeah, think they've fat, thinned yeah. them out a little bit now. Yeah. But back then, they were, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. at I least just, on the lows. Yeah. On the highs, they were, like, on the P-Rods. A bit, but not, like, yeah, yeah. the P-Rods. I remember you guys at the Futura SB lows. Mm. Some crazy joints. I think I had a pair of those. Mm. Yeah. And those they were, did EQs, which was the stash cool, joints. Like, the stash did the P-Rod joints. And then, uh. Stash did. Yeah, man, I love you're a superhero to me, bro. Because oh, dude, you've been a part of my lucky, lifestyle, bro. bro. Been a part of my lifestyle for a long time. Meanwhile, I'm wearing fucking well, Adidas on the wrong fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, 
So I will say this though, we were we were very very in tune with you know people like you and understanding what it meant and that you know we put that pressure on ourselves and took it on ourselves every day. Mm. And we took that shit serious, man. For skate for skateboarding, even though people can front on all the other shoes we've done, whether it was EQs, Earls, Angus, the list goes on, but we were genuinely trying to do what we could do to make it better to skate Mm -hmm. and at the same time kind of push design and aesthetic a little bit so um as much as i'm super proud of the dunk and being lucky to be a part of it i'm also proud in what the commitment nike made for as long as they made and they'll continue to make i hope um in you know supporting this little subculture that i just ended up loving my whole life right yeah Yeah. i mean i'll say to this day hands down sb has Throughout the history of my course, knowing Nike and Nike buying Nike still hands down the best materials on sneakers you'll ever find. Yeah. Oh, dude, don't even get me started. And even for the price points, yeah. mm. right? Like SBs weren't expensive, yeah. like ninety bucks. But the for... suede was much better on an SB than it was on something else. Mm. So where, where's Roscoe in this conversation right now? He's uh, we're sitting right next to Static. I don't know if he, can you see everybody. I can't see. No, no. I think you can only see me and uh, Carlos. I don't even see you. I'm pretty I don't sure see you, you either. It's fine. You, you and Roscoe I'm okay. definitely uh, okay. ran into each other a couple times. But potentially. So Roscoe, I can tell you this right now. Do you do? Are you uh, in product at Nike? Nah, I actually work just Nike Lab. Their little cool little store. Oh, okay. So work. So dude, Suck things like pig suede. Yeah. I mean, I remember and like when the, the crazy, dunks. the crazy leathers that we've used and all that. Like, mm-hmm. dude, doing that stuff now is a lot harder than. Yeah, I could see that back then. I mean, it's a lot cheaper. It's all about then. margins. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Oh shit, we got Peter paid in the. Uh, you had a lot chat. more freedom back says, then. What right? up, chat? Oh, he says, uh, "Yo, Darren." What up, Pete? <laughs> I didn't even know you guys were friends. He like just texts me out of the blue. He's like, yeah. "Guess where I'm at?" I was like, "What?" I, I recognize a half pipe. That's awesome. You got the half pipe in what you built. I saw you guys building that, right? That's what an extension of your house. Yeah. 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 So I, I, uh, I'll, I'll kind of segue for a second. And if I'm taking up too much airtime, just no, no shut worries. The fuck up. <laughs> but, um, so I moved to Boston, um, to go work for Converse after being with Nike for 10 years. Mm-hmm. I needed to change, move, wanted to get back East. Uh, cause at that point I moved out to, uh, Portland and, um, I was still super connected the whole time I've been in Boston up until recently, very, very connected with SB and that crew um, through the years, working on projects and and what have you. But um, yeah, I moved to Boston, you know, we moved out to the Burbs, which is good, but we rebuilt a barn and then inside the barn put a three and a half foot mini ramp. Beautiful ramp. Looks like my sanity for uh, (laughs) the winters. It looks like you can't, even ride it it's like so nice stress relieving oh no it, it gets ridden yeah but um it's starting to hurt a lot more these days <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so you know john roy and yeah man no john roy for too long yeah <laughs> love that dude that's crazy is up there that's what's up adam bennett yeah man chester and i house. worked together at uh converse so i used to work with him when he worked at mercer Oh, word up. I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, that was like, what, 80, late? Like, it was like 2008? Yeah. Nine? Like, I think he went to Converse like 2009 or 10. No. Uh, a little he after came that. there. It's probably like 15, yeah. maybe. It's, I don't know. Yeah, Adam's um, good people. He just had a baby. Yes, another one. Yep. Another one. Another one. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. So, Cliff, I've been in Boston for a minute. Right. And um, I'm going to keep us moving. I So I took a break from Nike. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there were a lot of conversations a couple of years ago. Nike's been going through a lot of changes. Um, and that, that that's good. That's what Nike does. Mm-hmm. Like uh, continually to shift and evolve, which is the right thing for the brand and the business. But um, I needed a break. Uh, my time at Converse was good, but I, I wanted to take a break. And I didn't want to move. They wanted me to come back to Portland. They asked me to go to um, Amsterdam. Mm. I, I essentially said, you know what? I need to take a break. Took a step back. Um, was able to kind of quietly 
sunset myself. I didn't have a plan, didn't have a job, which mm-hmm. is kind of crazy, being a grown ass man with a family and a mortgage. But um, I just need, I genuinely needed the time. So I took a break. And then through that time, I was helping some of my friends, doing a little bit of consulting, shit like that. And my friends here are concepts because I've known them, you know, since the late 90s. Right. Um, they're, they're going through a lot of growth changes and um, what they're doing. So, of course, um, sat down with them to, uh, you know, do some napkin math and offered to help in any way I could. Um, and eventually that evolved into, you know, Tarek, the CEO, basically came and said, hey, man, will you please come work with us? Like, mm-hmm. come work with us and, uh, you know, full time, which I didn't want to do. But um, for those of you that know this crew, it's an amazing crew. Right. Great people. And um, it's super fun. But, yeah, we're helping to open up a new store, a uh, flagship store in Boston on Newberry Street. And uh, in uh, New York, we're relocating the store that's down on uh, Hudson. Hudson by the tunnel. We're mm-hmm. relocating that up t- uh, to Union Square in New York. Oh, it'll be right by us. Uh, 12th yeah. in University. Mm-hmm. And um, that's all happening, like, now. Um but yeah, it's been fun to help these guys and kind of tighten things up and get ready for the future because there's a lot of great things happening. That's great, man. Congratulations on your Plus, I got an ill view. Yeah. Come on, man. You can't that, front on the view. That view is pretty ill. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, yeah, man, it's great to talk, you know, great to reconnect after so many years. Uh, no doubt. You know, definitely. Are you going to come down to New York anytime soon? Yeah, yeah, we'll actually be down there. Um, we're shooting some stuff uh, towards the end of uh, September. Awesome. We'll be down there. Awesome. All right, brother. Well, I'll see you then. It's only a couple weeks hey, away. Everyone, nice to meet all of you guys, even though I can't see you, but it's a pleasure to talk. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Hope hopefully, to we'll see meet you, someday, man. huh? Hope yeah, to brother. See you soon, bro. Thanks for the time, bro. Yo, no doubt. Thanks Cliff, for jumping on, Darren. Looks, man. All right, brother. Peace. Amen. Love Take you, man. Care, man. Peace. Later. Boom.